In her flight cage, Laurel provides potted nectar for the adults and some host plants for them to lay their eggs on. Some flowers she chose for their prolific nectar and long blooming season are zinnias, pentos, lantana, and echinacea. Sometimes other flowers don't work for butterflies though. For example, irises evolved to be pollinated by bees, so bumblebees know where the nectar is, but this butterfly does not have a clue. Besides flowers, there are other sources of food. Some butterflies prefer overripe fruit. Here, some morning cloaks are drinking fermented apricot juice. Beside flowers and fermented fruit, a third food source for adults is artificial nectar. This is a feeding dish for adult butterflies, made from the lid of a kitty litter container with a cotton pad in the bottom. Cotton pads are sold by cosmetic stores, 100% cotton, 88 cents for 100. They make the nectar from one cup of water and three tablespoons of sugar. But bacteria love sugar, and those bacteria make a butterfly sick the same as you and me. So you throw the cotton pad out after a couple of days and put in a fresh one. How many caterpillars are you growing right there? Well, right now, I'm selling 100 pupa a week to the Butterfly House in Reading and 25 pupa a week to the house in L.A. County. I'm producing about 125 pupa per week. And you can take care of these and feed them all in about two hours a day? About two hours a day just for the feeding. Now, the cleaning, I mean, you know, like then I have to take the boxes and I need to clean them. And I do that a couple times a week. I don't do it every day. And that's, you know, an additional couple of hours to do that twice a week. How much do you figure you're making a week? It's immaterial to me because I do it really because I love it. Let's say three hours a day average, seven days a week. That's, let's say, 20 hours. Right now, I'm making maybe $400 a week. How about equipment? Um, these acrylic boxes, the cheapest I've ever been able to find this size, which they're calling a shoebox size, is 88 cents. Hmm. You know, and I probably have 100 because you always have to figure that when you you take them out and put them into a new box, you then have a dirty box sitting for a couple of days until you clean it. So this is where you clean the containers. Really not, I don't cook here, <laughs> you know, so. And I have here a, a portable dishwasher that, you know, hooks up to the sink. And this is, this is how I'm um, cleaning and sanitizing. I'm using a little bit of just dish detergent and then I'm using a cup full of bleach in there. All this sanitation with hot water and bleach is most necessary when there's a lot of caterpillars in a synthetic environment because one sick one can infect them all. There's two basic kinds of infection. One is from bacteria or virus and the other is from fungus. Either way you can only tell they were sick when the caterpillar is already dead. A bacterial infection looks like a limp caterpillar full of dark liquid. But don't confuse it with one shedding its skin, because each caterpillar sheds its skin five times as they grow, and they sometimes assume weird postures when they do that. A fungal infection will make the caterpillar stiff like a mushroom, and you can actually break it in half like a stick. But if your caterpillar is dead for any reason, carefully remove it from its cage with a Kleenex. Don't let the skin break because it's full of germs and it'll spread the infection all over everything. Then flush it down the toilet and wash your hands and clean the cage with bleach. Look around for a different source of host plant from an area that's sunny and airy and away from garbage or damp. If you can't find another source, wash the plant with soap and bleach in cold water and rinse it too. Warm water will cause the plants to absorb the soap and bleach and those can kill the caterpillars when they're eaten. As a last resort, soak whatever host plant you have in a bucket of warm water with a capsule of tetracycline antibiotic from the pet store. Pet stores sell them for fish and birds, and it works for caterpillars, too. In the case when I'm dealing with eggs that are hatching and very small larvae, they like to crawl up between the container and the lid, so I'm using a coffee filter that I've placed between the lid and the container, so they'll climb up on the paper on the coffee filter and not get mushed when you're taking the lid on and off. Um, these are very small uh, morning cloak larva they just hatched oh I think it was two days ago this crawling mass is worth about five hundred dollars as live pupa next Laurel's going to show us how to feed the caterpillars and clean their containers 
Inside here, I have uh, a usual piece of wire. This is one inch by one inch. This actually sits down inside the box then. I put the plant material on top, and then this allows the, the bulk of the frass to drop down. So I'm just going to take these guys and just turn them upside down in the box, and all the frass is going to fall off. And I'm just Because I'm just going to get rid of this plant material. It's, it's dry enough that they're it's not going to be that good for them to eat. Laurel changes the dried out food for fresh milkweed that she cut out of the community garden. Laurel keeps cut host plant in her refrigerator so she can feed fresh food to her caterpillars every day. Then she takes the caterpillars off the old food and puts them directly onto the fresh food, one by one. If one is shedding or making a cocoon, don't touch it. Instead, move the stick or leaf that it's on, and especially don't try to help them shed, because that could kill them. When caterpillars are very small, it's better not to pick them up with your fingers because they squish. Instead, use a soft paintbrush or just transfer the piece of leaf they're attached to because sometimes they can't release their grip on the leaf even if they want to and their feet might actually pull off. When the caterpillars are on the new food, Laurel empties the leftovers into the trash. Then she puts the new food on the screen back into the box. A person can get these little water vials from a florist shop to keep your host plant fresh for a couple of days. Any jar will work, but it needs a lid with holes for the plant stems because larvae will drown themselves if they can. Laurel doesn't use them because it means more stuff to clean. Instead, she changes the food before it dries out. A good way to keep host plant fresh is to leave it growing on the bush and bring the cage to the plant. When the larvae get big, they eat like pigs. So this guy in the prison shirt gets tired of waiting on them and he first dumps them into the net. Then once their feet get a grip on the net, he puts the net over the host plant. And he ties the net up tightly with a twist tie to keep ants and earwigs out. Laura, we want to thank you for sharing this information with us. You're welcome.